And now let's welcome to the ring from Brighton, England. His professional record, 33 wins, three defeats with 24 of his 33 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former British champion and former IBO super middleweight world champion, Chris Eubank Jr. Well, here comes Chris Eubank Jr., one of the most talked about characters in boxing, making his Riyadh season debut and delighted to be joined in commentary by maybe one of the greatest coaches of all time, certainly one of boxing's best minds, Teddy Atlas. How are you? Good. How are you? Very, very good. Well, what do you make of Chris Eubank Jr.? Have you followed much of his career? Yeah. No, he... Listen, he's had his... That is development moments, you know, and, and I think that's still in front of him. I still, I believe he's still developing, uh, you know, and he's a guy that obviously is fairly versatile. You know, he can fight with you. He can also use his legs, use the ring. I like versatility. I like options. You know, it's always good to have options. If I have a car and it's a convertible, I can take the roof. I, I, I like that. I, I need the roof on. I keep it on. I can take it off. I, I like the, the opportunity to change up a little bit, but and obviously he's a he, he's he's a natural promoter too, like his father. I, I think that's probably where he learned it. He's got that showmanship, uh, Andy. Great to have Teddy Atlas with us tonight. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Me and Matt spoke to you uh, a year or so ago, Teddy. You were you were very generous with your time. You you, you you helped me out with with the book I did last year, which was which was absolutely great. You're one of the. No, it was, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you about it. With regard to Eubank, it does seem to go through trainers. He's had quite a lot of trainers. You've trained all sorts of different fighters. Is that a problem? What, what does that kind of tell you about him? Well, that's why I said that at first glance when you asked me the question, that he's still a work in progress. Because that kind of speaks to what I'm saying, that he's still searching. Because, you know, if, if you were... If you were settled in, in where you were and where you were going, I don't think you'd be looking for the guys. So that, that I'm glad you brought that up because that's, I didn't just say work in progress just to mix words. I, I think he's still searching and for, you know, for, for whatever it is that he thinks he needs to complete him as a fighter. And obviously he thinks that he needs to go to other guys to do it. There's two sides to that. There's an inconsistency where, you know, you're, you're trying to learn one thing and then all of a sudden you got somebody else teaching you something else. You don't have that consistency. But if you can learn more knowledge from somebody else, you know, then obviously there's that argument. But for me, the most important thing for a fighter, to your, to your point, is to have an identity. And if you go from training to training, it's kind of hard to get an identity. You know, and, and when I say identity, a lot of people might say, what do you mean, Teddy, identity? Uh, he knows what his name is. He, he knows what his social security is. You guys use social security numbers over here? I don't know if you do. But he, you know, he knows all that. But I mean an identity when you get in that ring. That not one minute you're not Joe Frazier, next minute you're Muhammad Ali. You know, that, that you feel secure about what it is you try? Am I trying to control range? Am I trying to move forward? You know, am I am I trying to get angles? You know, what what is my identity? And that's a real interesting point. When you go through that many trainers, it's kind of hard to 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 mold into knowing who you are as an identity. And that can take a little longer. And obviously, you, all that matters is you get to where you want to go and you develop in the way you want to develop. But it definitely can stagnate things when you go from one guy to another. Teddy, while, while we've got you, I think we've got maybe one, one or two more questions. I, I have to ask you about the main event. It's an incredible fight, and you've gone up against Arta Betobiev before. Difficult fight for Bivol. What do you make of it all on Saturday night? Anytime you get in there with Better Beaver, it's difficult. The guy's a nightmare. The guy's a boogeyman. You know, in a, in a real way. Listen, the worst thing you can think about better people make the mistake of thinking is he's just a good puncher. It's much more than that. I mean, look, people's 
the more polished guy, all right? I, without, you know, without taking all day to explain it. He's more polished. He, he controls range. He's got quick hands. He puts punches together. You know, he can fight with you. can keep you at the end of his jab, you know, and touch up. He can get angles. He can create traps. He, he can he can do all those things. The other guy's a sick and destroy guy. But it's almost not fair to say what I just said, that he's a sick and destroy guy because, because he, he, he does it with a hard jab. He gives you a little faint. Keep your balance. He does a little move that I don't think anyone knows. If he notices your feet on set, pop, he's jumping with a jab. Now, I wouldn't, I, I would advise any of you in the ring to jump in with a jab because you can get caught on your way in. But he's smart. He sees the guy's feet are going out, and he's he said, "Oh, it's safe." Pop. And this way, he closes the gap fast, and people wonder how did he get on me so fast. That's how he got on you. So he does little subtle things. That's more than just, and I'm not being in any way disparaging to a man I respect as much as anyone, but he's more than a caveman who just brings a club. He, he's a lot more than that. And, um, but he's also going to have, to, I think the burden's gonna be on him to close the gaps a little bit, where people can be very comfortable owning the outside. I think that Better Beaver at some point, Better Beaver is going to have to close the gaps. And you guys have heard what I said in the past. When you try to close the gap on a guy that's a good counterpuncher, that knows what he's doing, knows how to control range, knows how to, you come in six inches, he goes back nine, keeps a little bit of a gap. You, it's like going through a bad neighborhood. You could get mugged. <laughs> Absolutely incredible breakdown. I expected nothing less. Thank you so much, Teddy Atlas, for joining us. My pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. We'll have you again anytime. I'll grab that from you. Thank you, sir. Teddy Atlas. Unbelievable. I'll tell you, Andy, I used to play I used to play Fight Night on the PlayStation. Obviously, I'm going to be playing Undisputed now, which is out. But uh, he was the commentator on Fight Night. And he, he was just so great. So many great analogies. The way he breaks down a fight. The way he commentates. Remember Tim Bradley, We Are Firemen, all of that. What a character. It, it is. It, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to him. He's always just intoxicating company, to be honest. And, and that was so interesting to listen to. And, and Matt, one thing that Teddy was, was picking up there is that Eubank going through trainers the way that he does, it suggests to Teddy that he's still searching for an identity. And that is an interesting point with him, isn't it? Because we felt like we kind of knew what he was earlier in his career, high octane, high punch out, but that kind of a fighter. Then he went to Roy Jones and he kind of changed and Roy tried to get in boxing like Roy, which with a, and it's the ultimate compliment to, to Roy Jones Jr. Hardly anybody can do that. And then he's with Brian McIntyre, and now he's with Jonathan Banks. I mean, does, does he know what he is as a fighter, do you think? No, no, I, I, I tell you what I've heard Teddy saying is he's, he's, he's getting caught between styles because he's not sticking with one trainer long enough to solidify and cement that style. Yeah, you're learning bits during the training camp, however many weeks got together, you have a fight. But then you're with the next fight, you're with a new trainer. So all the things that you worked on and your improvements and adjustments you made, it's kind of like out the window. And then you're doing new things again. So you never really nail your style. Well, let's hear from the man who's been referred to for a few years as the bad guy. Chris Eubank Jr. will shortly join Olivia for an interview. Did the entire workout in native dress here. I'm sure the locals will, will have taken to that. Nice to see him with a new trainer there in Jonathan Banks. I'm just making sure everything looks meticulous before he gets on camera for this interview with Olivia. He is a character. But it's the first fight in around a year for Chris Eubank Jr. And the question is, this version of Chris Eubank Jr., what is he like? Let's find out. Chris, I mean, I don't think many people were expecting you to come out in this. Explain your thinking behind it and why you decided to come out like that. Listen, this is uh, the traditional outfit of the Saudis. This is called a throw. And uh, it's a privilege to be here and I'm respecting the community and the culture. And uh, it's actually a perfect way to 
get an extra sweat out in this uh, in this heat. I've got to cut these extra few pounds at the end of this camp, so uh, here we are. I mean, you look like you were enjoying yourself there. You look like you worked hard, but you were dancing away to the camera as well. I look incredible in this outfit. <laughs> in fact, I might just wear this for the rest of the trip. I think you should. It looks good on you. Um, this fight week, you said you've been enjoying yourself and you're 13 months out, but, but how important and how big has this fight camp been for you building up to this fight? Listen, every fight camp is important. Every fight camp is, uh, is tough. And um, this has been no different. I've trained hard for a long time for this fight. Um, you know, it took extra, extra time to get back into the swing of things because I've been off for a year. But I'm here. I'm fully focused. I'm fit. I'm a couple of pounds off weight right now. So we're ready to go. And obviously after that Liam Smith rematch that you won, you've since changed trainers. What was the thinking behind that? Uh, I like Jonathan Banks' philosophy, his mindset, and his teachings. I agree with the things that he says and the things that he does in training. Uh, he also trained Triple G for this exact same opponent, so he's got the, uh, the ingredients and the know-how to beat this man. So, uh, yeah, it's a perfect setup. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.